Hey everyone, Micah here with Electrek, and today the electric scooter in front of me is the new NGT. This is my own personal electric scooter. I've put about a thousand kilometers or 600 miles on it so far, and today is the perfect day to take you guys along with me while I give it a complete review. Let's check it out. The new NGT is a potent urban commuter vehicle. I got mine from the Tel Aviv dealer and it has been my daily driver for the last several months, during which I have not had to buy a drop of gas, pay for parking, or sit in a single traffic jam. My wife and I absolutely love the scooter as a quick, convenient, and most importantly fun way to get around the city. But before I get into the convenience that this scooter offers, let's begin with the tech specs. The new NGT sports a maximum speed of 80 km per hour or 50 miles per hour, though for some reason the literature all says 70 km per hour. I find that the true GPS verified speed is a couple kilometers per hour under the displayed speed, so I generally top out at a real 78 km per hour with a full battery. Speaking of batteries, the new NGT has two of them, one under the seat and one under the feet. They add up to 4.2 kilowatt hours of capacity and can both be removed for carrying inside and charging remotely, though I generally just leave them on the scooter and charge at a wall outlet in the parking garage of my building. But the ability to charge the batteries either on or off the scooter is a big benefit that can help fit the lifestyle of homeowners and apartment dwellers. When it comes to range, new claims a maximum of 140 kilometers or 87 miles. In practice, I find that I actually get around 100 kilometers of range, which is pretty convenient because I know that whatever the battery percentage is, that's how many kilometers I have left. To be fair, I do keep the scooter in the highest power mode literally 100% of the time, so if you're limiting the power to the middle mode, you will get better range. The lowest power mode neuters the speed down to 25 km per hour, so it's basically useless in my opinion. Me, I like the high power mode, which if you want numbers, is 3.5 kilowatts of peak power from that 3000 watt continuous rated Bosch hub motor. Explaining the feeling of power is always tricky, it's much easier to experience it for yourself, but short of that experience, I'd say the power is fairly peppy on the scooter, but not mind blowing. I generally accelerate faster than cars when the light turns green, unless a car simply floors it to beat me. I blow away the 50c scooters all the time, and I can hold my own against the 125cc scooters, at least when it comes to acceleration, though they'll sometimes catch me once they spool up enough speed. 250cc scooters? Well, they can eat me for lunch. Now the smart features on the scooter are also really useful. The scooter's app has everything you can think of, including GPS location for anti-theft, plus anti-theft notifications if the alarm is triggered, it can remotely tell you your battery charge, you can view your past trips, all of your ride stats, you can perform a 100 point inspection of the scooter to check for any issues, and you can even do over the air updates to the scooter. The 100 point inspection is actually really cool because you don't need to take your scooter to a dealer just to have it inspected for an issue. You can do it yourself. Now I've never had the test throw up any flags, so I don't know what that would look like, but I guess that's just another good indication of reliability, that in the first five or six months so far, I haven't had any problems. Okay, now let's talk about the practicality of a vehicle like this. In a city, there's no better way to get around than on an electric scooter. The new is plenty powerful to pull away at lights and climb hills. It's also a nimble navigator. To put both its hill climbing and its nimbleness to the test, I took it on a tour of historic Jaffa, which is known for its narrow, hilly alleyways. The high-torque motor eats up hills, and the scooter's small footprint makes it great for wiggling past all but the most narrow of obstructions. The 14-inch wheels and the hydraulic suspension are also good for roads that aren't in the best of shape. And considering this city has been here for a few thousand years, it's hard for me to fault the roads too hard for their imperfections. The narrow scooter is also great for filtering or lane splitting, and I find that I can often squeeze through gaps that other scooters can't attempt. Now I should probably give a trigger warning here because I know the comment section always explodes when I start lane splitting, but listen up for a second. Not only is this legal here and in most of the world, 
but it's super convenient. Oh man, I can never go back to not lane splitting. With a narrow scooter like this, I can always make it to the front of the line at red lights to ensure that I'm able to blast away when the light turns green and leave traffic behind me. When traffic is moving, but not very quickly, lane splitting on a narrow scooter like this lets me make much quicker progress. I literally cut commute times in Tel Aviv in half or even more. But of course, you should only do this if it's legal in your area, and even more importantly, only where it is safe and you feel comfortable doing it. You have to choose your battles and know when it just isn't worth it to get a few car lengths ahead. And keep in mind that you're basically silent on an electric scooter like this, which is why I always ride assuming cars have no idea I'm there. Okay, now let's talk utility. You can accessorize the scooter a bit. I didn't decide to add a cargo box since I think it messes with the scooter's appearance too much, but I did add a seat back because it makes my wife feel safer and more secure, like she won't slip off the back if I accelerate too hard. Though now she doesn't hug me as tight when she's on the back, so that might not have been the best move on my part. I also added a phone holder, which I highly recommend for anyone that uses GPS to get around. It mounts on the mirror stud and it doesn't take up space on the already space limited handlebars. If you really need to carry a big load, you can add various cargo boxes to the back, but I usually either backpack it or I put objects between my feet when I need to carry something larger. That's a huge advantage of an electric scooter like this over an electric motorcycle, that you get all that room in between your feet for more cargo. There's also a handy bag clip there to hang your grocery shopping, or your wife's purse, which yes I end up putting there a bunch too which I guess speaks again to the utility of a scooter like this. It's just so useful as a city vehicle because you can carry so many things. Now that doesn't mean I'm totally in love with the scooter. There are a few things that I'm not a fan of. The major one is that I can't really use the last 15% of the battery. I mean I can, but when I drain it below 15%, the scooter puts me in its lowest power mode to protect the battery. But that also means I'm crawling along at 25 km per hour or less, which feels super dangerous on many roads. I don't normally let my battery discharge that much anyways, because I like to stay fairly topped up, but after doing a deep discharge test once for science, I never did it again. The batteries are also a bit heavy, with each weighing about 11 kilos or 25 pounds. Carrying two is possible, but not if you have other things in your hands. It's a dedicated double arm farmer's carry. Otherwise, I don't have many complaints. I mean, maybe they could have offered more than just three color options, but at that point I'm just grasping for straws to find anything to complain about here. For the price, it's really a heck of a deal. Oh, the price, the price, I have to tell you guys the price. And also probably go reply to the angry commenters who thought I left it out because they didn't watch the whole video. So the price, it obviously varies around the world, but in the US it's going for around 4,500 bucks, and in Europe for around 4,500 euros. It's a little more in Tel Aviv where I got mine, but we apparently love our taxes on imports here, so it is what it is. This is also the long range version of the scooter, keep in mind, it's the most expensive one. You can get versions of the NGT with less battery capacity and save a thousand bucks or so. At these prices, the NGT may be a bit more expensive than some more basic electric scooters, and of course it costs more than cheap gas scooters, but you also get a lot more here. It's quieter, it's nicer to ride, it doesn't vibrate under you, it doesn't stink, it doesn't have several hundred engine parts that each have their own breakdown frequency and replacement costs. The thing is just a simple to use, solidly made, and smart electric scooter that, in my opinion, makes it the perfect urban commuter vehicle. Thanks for watching everyone. We hope you enjoyed that review of the new NGT electric scooter. If you did like the video, why don't you give it a thumbs up? And don't forget to subscribe either, so you won't miss any of our future electric vehicle videos. We'll see you here next time. I got